Coming up in today's show, stocks start the week off on a positive note, Bank of America says bet on risky stocks, Nvidia surges high on the back of an upgrade, Goldman Sachs says the Fed will start cutting by May, Treasury yields move higher, retail earnings and data this week, China goes deeper in the red, and I go on vacation. Welcome back to the Click Capital Daily Market Show, everybody. I hope you had a great weekend. My name is Jared. I'm going to run you through all the most important news, data, and charts from the markets today. And we started off the week on a positive note, led by NVIDIA on the back of an upgrade, which sent it 7% higher, along with the other semiconductors doing well, and all the mega cap tech except Tesla put in a good performance today, making the NASDAQ the winning index. However, we did see a bit of weakness in consumer defensive, REITs, utilities, and a little bit in regional banks. And so this is retail week. We've got a bunch of earnings coming out from retail stocks along with some retail economic data. So stick with me and I'll get into that in a bit. But just quickly before we go any further, just to let my regular daily viewers know, after I finish today's show, I'm heading off with my wife on vacation for two weeks. Looks like we're having a slow summer in the markets. The VIX is at 14 and we're a bit overdue a holiday. So unfortunately, I won't be able to make the daily show for the next two weeks. However, we'll be back later on this month on the 28th of August and back to doing the daily show. However, if anything big does happen in the markets, I'll probably update you guys with a video. Other than that, it looks like we're set to continue this slow grind and a really low VIX and the markets are just a bit of a groundhog day mode at the moment. So we're escaping the cold mountains where we normally live and going to a much warmer climate. So just looking at the markets today, we had a little bit of a bounce in the S&P 500, closed up a bit over half a percent, sitting right at its 50 day VWAP now. And the NASDAQ was the winning index today, up over 1.1% but still below its 50 day VWAP. And there's a look at the VIX falling a bit lower to 14.8 now. And so there's still a lot of bullish sediment out there. Bank of America said investors should bet on risky stocks as the market enters early cycle phase of expansion. The bank double upgraded consumer discretionary stocks, downgraded the staples, and they gave seven reasons why they're getting more bullish on the stock market and consumer discretionary stocks. That's because number one, they expect a soft landing, saying we won't get a recession. Number two is positioning in discretionary is at all time lows. Number three is flirting with the early cycle, which shows historically in the phase one recovery, sectors like value, small size, and high risk perform well. Number four reason being discretionary earnings delivered a big beat in second quarter. The fifth being housing has shown signs of nearing a bottom and home builders trough late last year, and that supports com consumer discretionary as a sector most correlated with housing data. Number six, real wage growth back to positive. And number seven, negative consumer headlines are overblown. And the buzz for AI continues as well. We saw that in the stock price of Nvidia today up over seven percent on the back of an analyst note from morgan stanley saying the stock is the firm's top pick after its most recent earnings report and they're calling this recent sell-off a good entry point despite supply constraints they still expect a meaningful beat and raise this quarter and more importantly strong visibility over the next three to four quarters and here's a look at the price action in nvidia today putting in a huge bullish engulfing candle on above average volume and it's true last quarter we did get a significant beat delivering earnings per share 18 percent above expectations and so they very well could beat again when they report on wednesday next week so even though i'll be on the beach you can bet i'll be watching that one and i'd the market expectation would be for them to beat significantly again and deliver really upbeat positive guidance and we could very well break out to new all-time highs and see $500 a share by the end of next week. However, if they don't, I'd say the market would be quite upset and we could go diving the other way. Another reason for the stock market to get excited is Goldman Sachs says the Fed could cut rates as soon as next May. They said the cuts in our forecast are driven by this desire to normalize the funds rate from a restrictive level once inflation is closer to target, not by a recession. So they're saying it they expect inflation just to march back on down to 2% without getting a recession and then the Fed can just cut those rates, which would indeed be a Goldilocks scenario for the stock market if the Fed can cut rates not because of a recession, but just because inflation has fallen so low. However, not so fast, says the bond market, with yields climbing again today, finishing at monthly highs. And we did see upticks in CPI last Thursday and in the PPI on Friday came in a little bit hotter than expected as well. And we can see that in the government bond two-year yield today, moving up to just under 5% and a bit of moves in the back end as well with the 10-year sitting right now at 420. And that's just a little bit below the 4.33% we saw in October last year, which has been the high point in this cycle. And that looks to be in a strong short-term uptrend now. And the December Fed Fund futures contract as well, moving up today, close to fresh all-time highs at 5.42%. So just looking at the price action in bond yields and extrapolating those probabilities from the Fed Fund futures as to what the market expects where the Fed will be. It's still not a done deal. The market's still given a better than one in three chance they'll hike in November. It's looking like they're probably going to pause in September. However, this is all dependent on the next CPI prints we're getting 
and the price action in commodities that contributes to that. Just looking at the dollar index here, we've had a pretty good move over the last month, now back above 103 today. And normally a strong dollar is a strong headwind for commodities. However, commodities have moved up pretty good the last month as well. And that's largely on the back of crude here, which we do appear to be stalling out at this $84 resistance level and may get a little bit of a pullback. However, that to keep moving higher, that's gonna put a lot of upward pressure on inflation, the CPI, and possibly interest rates. And that could be why we're seeing noted investors like the big short Michael Burry, who's recently been loading up on put options in the S&P 500 and NASDAQ indices, betting against the stock market. However, to balance that out, he's also got longs in mining, shipping, and energy stocks. And he's sold out of all his banks and regional bank trades, which have had a pretty good pop the last couple of months. He also got out of his Chinese stocks, Alibaba and JD.com. And he still has positions in one of his favorite companies, private prison operator Geo Group, and a couple of others. So this week and next, we're getting a bunch of earnings out from the big regions retailers along with economic retail data first kicking it off is home depot reporting earnings tomorrow we've got target walmart and lowe's to follow just looking at the price action and home depot been trading pretty well this last couple of months the last quarterly came pretty much in line and earnings estimate for tomorrow is four dollars 45 a share which is about 10 percent lower from the same quarter last year and just looking at the weekly chart of the retail etf xrt here has been pretty weak since it topped out in november 21 and it's pretty much gone sideways for the last year. So we'll see what Home Depot says about the health of the consumer tomorrow. And also out tomorrow will be US retail sales month over month. Growth expected to come in at 0.4%, year over year 1.5%. And that data due out first thing in the morning may have a bit of an impact on retail consumer discretionary stocks as well. Another news out today, one of the oldest stocks on the market U.S. Steel finished up nearly 40% after rejecting a $7.3 billion takeover offer from Cleveland Cliffs. And after they rejected that, another offer came through from privately held Esmark, which made an offer to buy it for $35 a share. And the markets are signing a little bit of a chance here it won't go through because we can see it closed at 31.08 a share today. And Cleveland Cliffs had a strong day as well, up almost 9%. Typically in a merger ARB scenario, you'll see the stock being acquired, rocket up, and the acquirer been sold off. However, it still has to get through a lot of regulatory hurdles for it to get done, and that's why the market's probably assigning a material chance that it won't go through here. Try and had another tough start to the week in their local market yesterday, with deepening problems in the property sector. As one of their big developers, Country Garden flags more debt problems. And like many property developers, they're getting absolutely hammered this year in the stock market. It's down almost 70% year to date, and that's because they've just got so much debt that they can't pay back. Investors are bailing, both offshore and domestic, and problems in China may be starting to spill over to corporate America as well, with big companies there like Caterpillar and DuPont lowering their expectations and saying they are pessimistic about the country's long-awaited post-pandemic boom will actually materialize. And even Tesla, one of the strongest brands amongst the Chinese wealthy, are slashing prices in China for some Model Ys. However, we did see them do the same thing in America late last year, which also attracted a lot of criticism and ended up working out pretty well for them, beating on their quarterly delivery numbers. And there's already signs the Chinese government are intervening into their stock market with some unusual trading activity and $4.4 billion going into Chinese ETF in just eight days. With some saying it's Beijing's national team intervening to try and prop up the market and stem the outflow of capital and confidence. And just looking at the price action in the China 50 index, for their Monday session, they sold off a bit. However, it looks to be dip bought there with possibly that national team stepping in like they've been known to do and directly buy stocks or order the major investment houses and brokers to stop selling, otherwise they'll be punished and to only allow buy orders. Not much to change with the fear and greed index, still stuck in the greed zone, which it looks like it's gonna be all summer. And a typical quiet day to start off the week in the options market, 36 million contracts traded, still 54% of them calls. And dark pool traders still not getting really excited by the market here. And it looks like corporate insiders have gone on summer vacation as well. Not much buying going on these last couple of weeks. And back into the charts, just looking at international stock indices, pretty quiet start for the week. Still in this low volatility environment across the board and still a pretty shallow slope in the volatility term structure. We've got the one day at 11.7 and not even above 20 on the six month VIX. Volatility risk premium looks to be pulling back a bit here. Just currently 5.7 points above realized. And there's a look at realized showing the stock market isn't moving much at all just at an annualized rate of 9.1%. Has been a little bit of hedging coming in on this pullback with a few more people buying puts. And there's short-term Brett looking a bit suppressed down here with 36% of stocks above their 20-day average. Still got just above half at 54% above their medium-term 50-day average. And we're getting a bit of more negative Brett showing up in the amount of stocks making new lows, both on the MYSC and NASDAQ today. 
the amount of stocks making new lows, eclipsing the amount of stocks making new highs. There's a look at the growth versus defensive sector spread, much like the NASDAQ and mega cap tech. Just had a little bit of a pop here, but still in a technical short-term downtrend. And a little bit of negative breadth for small caps, just losing their 50-day VWAP versus the SP500. Inflation expectations found new multi-month highs today, and that increase in yields is putting further pressure on TLT and bond prices in general. There's Bitcoin still moving sideways in this low volatility. There's gold continuing to have a little bit of a pullback here. And over to stock sectors, a bit mixed out there today. Meme stocks fell 2.4%. Semis with a winner on the back of Nvidia. Clean Energy looks to put in a hammer candle formation in this oversold level. Regional banks with a loser down 1.9%. Energy stock still going strong on an inside day. Healthcare still holding up pretty well. And utilities still trying to find support down here. There's BlackRock still on a short-term downtrend. And all of the mega cap tech stocks today finished high, including Apple, Microsoft, Google still near highs, along with Amazon. And there's a look at Tesla, which was the loser out of the pack today. And over to meme stocks, pretty flat for the group, except for AMC, which came off hard 35%. After the court approved their merger with the Ape units, pretty much allowing the company to sell more stock and continuing to dilute existing holders. So at this point, it's all just financial engineering and games. Until I can really start showing some positive EPS, this stock is going to remain highly volatile. And there's a look at some of the banks. With the regionals coming off a little bit here today. And Charles Schwab actually just losing its 50-day VWAP for the first time in a couple of months. Finishing down 3.5% today. And that pretty much wraps it up to start the week. The market still looks to be in this shallow pullback. We did see some good price action in NVIDIA today with that big bullish engulfing candle. And the focus this week will pretty much be on the earnings from the big retailers and the retail economic data out tomorrow. And like I said, I'm just about to leave for the airport to go on vacation for two weeks. I'll be back on Monday the 28th and doing the daily show again. However, I'm going to have a bit of a break until then, but I will keep an eye on the markets. And if anything big or interesting does happen, I'll make a quick video for you guys. Otherwise, this low VIX environment looks set to continue and it looks like to be a bit of a slow summer. But something will eventually wake the market up like it always does. And we'll just have to wait and see what that is. Maybe a surprise CPI or inflation print could do it. Other than that, thanks very much for sticking with me and Click Capital. Truly appreciate your support. I hope you enjoy your summer break if you're in the Northern Hemisphere or maybe a bit of a winter break for my Southern Hemisphere friends. And I look forward to making videos for you guys again at the end of this month. Thanks very much and see you again then. Cheers.